Hello all. Over the past month, I've been saying some really nasty things about criminal justice in the United States. The racist nature of our system is difficult to prove, however, because it is the result of millions of separate decisions, many of which do not seem racist at all. Thankfully, the New York City Police Department has been kind enough to prove everything I have been saying with a single case. Have you ever heard of Operation Ivy League? In 2010, the NYPD arrested five Columbia University students for dealing drugs out of their frat houses. They spent five months and hundreds of thousands of dollars building an airtight case featuring multiple purchases by undercover police officers. Why did they do this? My guess would be that the NYPD really doesn't like looking racist. A high-profile bust of some rich kids goes a long way towards justifying a system of racial oppression. The kids were arrested, starting a nationwide media frenzy. The story went out with exactly the messages that the police wanted. Crime doesn't pay, no matter who you are. The laws apply to everybody equally. Operation Ivy League was a fantastic public relations exercise for the New York City Police Department. Or at least it was initially. If we look at what happened after the arrests, the story becomes very, very different. Eight people were arrested in this case. Five of them were students at one of the most prestigious universities in the country. Three of them were regular New Yorkers who had no connections, no money for lawyers, and no one reporting their story. So what happened? If we look at the accused by what they were initially charged with, the picture gets clearer. Miran Sarzinski, who tried to plan kidnapping and possibly murder with an undercover cop, is a special case. He's in jail for six years and he belongs there. The rest of the defendants were charged with drug crimes. The least charged of the defendants was Sarzinski's girlfriend, Megan Asper. Despite the fact that she never actually sold any drugs, she went to prison for 45 days and will have a felony conviction on her record for the rest of her life. A felony conviction makes it difficult to find a job, uh, among other things. Jose Stefan Perez, Mike Wims, Adam Klein, and Chris Coles sold serious amounts to undercover police officers. None of these guys saw the inside of a prison cell. Perez, Klein, and Wims all pled guilty to the lesser charge of attempted drug possession. These felony convictions came with five years of probation. If they complete these periods successfully, however, their convictions will be knocked down to misdemeanors. This means no felony record. Coles got even less, and treatment for his marijuana addiction. So four out of five frat boys got no jail time, and if they aren't idiots, their records will be cleared of all felonies. This leaves us with two defendants. Harrison David was the main frat boy offender. The NYPD built the case around him and had him on 10 separate counts of drug sales, stemming from multiple undercover buys. The case against Roberto Lagares was much shakier. He was charged with criminal sale of a controlled substance in the second degree, which is also the most severe offense that David was charged with. But the police only bought cocaine from him once. The case against the rich kid was much stronger and involved many more documented offenses. We can assume that David had a better lawyer, so it might make sense for them to be punished in a similar manner. What actually happened? David went to prison for six months. Ligaris is still in jail today. His punishment was 12 times worse than David's. So to review, the NYPD poured an extraordinary amount of time and money into proving that the laws applied to everybody equally. Instead, they proved the exact opposite. In the state of New York, at least, justice is for sale. Five rich kids were arrested. They were the whole point of the operation. All of that effort amounted to a single six-month prison term for one of the five defendants. All three of the poor kids arrested got serious prison terms amounting to a total of over 12 years. We need to follow up on these stories. The aftermath may not be as exciting as the initial arrests, but it shows us what is actually happening in our country. Please share this story widely. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe.